Hi, welcome to the International Course Time and Fastening System Symposium. My name is Zhong Yi Liu. In this video, I'm gonna present the recent studies from our research group. The title for this presentation is Effects of Mixed Traffic Patterns and Balanced Support Conditions on Track Performance Investigated Through Discrete Element Modeling. The researchers working in this study include Zhong Yi Liu, Ying Feng, and Professor Arututmura. In the beginning, I will introduce some background information about shear track. Shear track or corridor indicates the situation that passenger and freight trains share the same rail track or corridor. This is a good option for saving money with more and more operation demand of freight and passenger traffic. The bottom two figures show different type vibration velocities subjected to freight train in the left and passenger train loading in the right. It's obvious that different loading patterns will cause different effects on both cross tie and ballast layer. But what will happen if we mix passenger and freight train loading together instead of applying single type of train loading? The other aspect we are studying here is cross tie support condition. Four common support conditions are shown in the bottom figure. They are lack of real safe support, which is usually caused by rail load, lack of center support, which is usually present after tamping, full support, usually representing initial support condition, and high center binding. The two figures here show the different balance movements and cross tie center movements in different support conditions. Previous research efforts have proved that some poor support conditions could cause excessive cross tie vibration, cracking, and eventually failure. Thus, it is significant to study the effects of cross tie support conditions together with mixed traffic patterns. This grid element method has been widely used to study the ballast and cross tie dynamic behaviors. Blocks 3D is a polyhedral DEM simulation code that has been used and verified in the field of real road. Our group has successfully simulated Traxel shear ties and developed a single time model for studying cross tie support conditions. In the last two years, we developed a full scale experiment simulation with eight cross ties and more than 100,000 particles. Blocks 3D has irreplaceable advantage of the ability to investigate individual particle behaviors and train loading. So we are using Blocks 3D DEM simulation for this study. Our objective is to study the effects of cross tie support condition and mix traffic through investigating cross tie vibration, ballast particle movement, and ballast particle acceleration. In the following slides, I will introduce the DEM model setup as shown in the bottom left figure. Single type DEM models were constructed with typical cross tie and ballast layer layouts in accordance with ARIMA standards. The four common cross tie support conditions, as introduced earlier, were considered. Note that there was no preloading history on the constructed model in the beginning, so we can assume the ballast is fresh at the start. This slide summarizes some material properties of ballast particles in the DI models. The ballast green size distribution met ARIMA number three and number four A gradations. The ballast particles generated in the DI models also follow the typical angularity index and FNA ratio distributions, which are obtained by EUIAIA an image scanning system. Some verified model parameters, including interparticle fraction angle, stiffness, and damping, are summarized in the bottom table. In this study, we consider two train loadings, freight and passenger trains. The freight train travels at a speed of 50 miles per hour, while passenger train has the speed of 150 miles per hour. Freight train has 23 kips of real seat load, but passenger train has lighter real seat load at 11.5 kips. 
This table also shows their different layouts like vehicle spacing, doggy spacing, and wheel spacing. Both freight and passenger train have 32 axles because we are assuming each train has 8 cars, and each car has 4 axles. The bottom two figures show one freight and passenger car with 4 axles applied in all models. We generated four train traffic patterns by combining the freight or passenger trains in different sequences. In this plot, 50 represents a freight train passing and 150 represents a passenger train passing. And each train has 32 extra loading buses. We classified them into three patterns, pure patterns which consist of four same train loadings, only freight trains or only four passenger train loads. The second pattern is called alternating patterns, which means freight train and passenger train come alternatively. The last pattern is 2 plus 2 pattern. For example, two passenger train followed by two freight trains, or two freight trains followed by two passenger trains. In total, six traffic patterns are studied here. Let's look at some simulation results. Bottom figure illustrate cross tie vibration velocities and different support conditions in case of pure freight train loading. Representative part and full axle loading in each train part was selected and combined on the same time axis. In the four support conditions, magnitude of vibration velocities gradually decrease with train passes. It's because with train passes, the ballast layer get more and more stable. We can also note that in full support condition, magnitudes are lower than other non-uniform support conditions. We have six traffic patterns and four support conditions. So in total, there are 24 different scenarios in this study. The representative cross tie vibration velocities and their four axle loading in the fourth train pass are summarized in the two tables. When we do the comparison, we have to compare the dynamic behaviors under the same fourth train loading. To be more specific, the left three traffic panels go into same comparison group because their fourth trains have the same loading. On the other hand, the red three traffic patterns are put together for comparison. The case of pure pattern cases are highlighted with orange rectangular. From the results, we can get the same observation that magnitudes in full support condition are lower than other non-uniform support conditions. Interestingly, we can also find magnitudes in pure patterns are the same or mostly smaller than those in alternating and 2 plus 2 patterns. Such observations show us the significance to keep full support condition, and mixed traffic might lead to faster cross-site deterioration. The next ice bite is ballast particle movements. The table shows ballast particle movement with sequential train passes in four support conditions. Warmer colors mean higher ballast movements. Most ballast movement takes place during the first train pass, and it can be related to the initial shakedown in ballast layer. Interestingly, high center binding results in the smallest overall ballast movement. Ballast particle in the full support condition is more stable during and after second train pass. The bottom two matrices compare the ballast particle movements due to the fourth train pass in the 24 different scenarios. Cases of pure patterns are also highlighted in orange rectangulars. In all support conditions, mixed patterns produce higher ballast particle movements than pure patterns. High center bending leads to the smallest but asymmetric ballast movement. We believe that Asymmetric ballast movements will cause some unstable issue in ballast layer. Highest ballast movements can be observed 
in the lack of center support conditions. We also investigated the ballast particle accelerations. To obtain accurate ballast accelerations, one more train, the fifth train loading, was simulated with higher output frequency. The additional train loading was the same as the fourth train. Since there are about 11,000 particles generated in the models, it is not feasible to study accelerations of each particle. So, we selected representative ballast particles within 7 0.2 meter cubes. The locations of the 7 cubes were determined by k means clustering results from previous study. We used the individual ballast particle force and velocity information as features, and then classified the ballast particles into five groups. As shown in, the, in this figure, they are labeled in different colors. The median accelerations in each cube were regarded as representative accelerations for the cube. Then, representative acceleration magnitudes of cube 1, 2, 3, 6, and 7 which are located at the top ballast were averaged and regarded as the magnitude of integrated acceleration. This bar chart here shows the magnitude of integrated acceleration due to the fifth train pass in different scenarios. The two most solid bars, most solid blue and the most solid orange bars represent two pure traffic patterns. The magnitude in full support condition is mostly smaller than other three non-uniform support conditions. Also, pure traffic patterns gain similar or mostly smaller integrated accelerations except lack of center support condition with high-speed passenger train pass. This exemption may be caused by high-speed load amplification effects since acceleration is linked to force acting on ballast particles. Higher ballast degradation potential occurs in cases of mixed traffic and poor support conditions. So we need to pay more attention to the mixed traffic panel cases and also the poor support conditions. According to these insightful results, we can summarize and draw some conclusions here. First, full support condition is the ideally desired and most stable support condition in terms of the smallest cross-tie vibration velocities, second smallest and stable ballast movement performance, especially after second train pass, and also smallest ballast integrated accelerations. Second, Smallest ballast particle movements occur in high center bending condition. However, they may cause a symmetric ballast movement. We also believe that a symmetric ballast movement can cause more issues in ballast layer. Also, the largest bending moment is present in this condition. Therefore, high center bending condition needs to be avoided. Mixed traffic panels for example, freight and passenger train alternating loading pattern and two pass two pattern tend to be more detrimental for both cross tie and ballast layer than dedicated passenger and freight lines, which is pure traffic pattern in this study. So we would recommend that construction requirements and maintenance schedules need to be modified for shared track and shared corridor mixed traffic lines. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any further questions or want to discuss with us, please contact Professor Tutumur at University of Illinois and Urbana Champaign.